Once again, thanks for visiting my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 restaurants in Denver. This was a little hard to, co to compile because there are six and a half thousand restaurants in Denver and a good percentage of them just opened up in the last two, three years. So I've compiled it down and here we go. So coming in at number 10 is actually a wine bar um, slash tapas bar um, in Rhino District called Barcelona. Now the atmosphere is great, it has seasonal uh, menu which changes out a lot, but it has a wine bar vibe. So it's really fresh and great for couples um, and even with friends. It's not as romantic as some of the others I'll be talking about uh, in this video, but it's a really cool and interesting place in one of the coolest districts in Denver, which is the Rhino or the Art District. Now it offers a fun and friendly environment, but you really have to be a uh, love wine. Uh, they have an award-winning selection of Spanish wines and one of the largest uh, uh, wine programs um, in the US. Now coming in at number nine is Matsuhisa. Now this is the Nobu chain. It was um, Robert De Niro when he was in Japan. Um, asked who the name of the sushi chef in this rather small hole in the wall um, was and he was called Matsuhisa Nobu. So he and Robert De Niro started the chain Nobu and they branched off into a more um, fusion Japanese uh, menu called Matsuhisa. It's very avant-garde and uh, modern and it's like twist on the Japanese sushi and sashimi. Um, so it's a little bit different. Now the one in Cherry Creek I'm talking about, I frequent a lot. The cocktails are phenomenal and the food. Um, plates are kind of small and it's on the pretentious side, which is fine with me, but um, it's a great place. You have to visit Cherry Creek. I think it's First and St. Paul Street. Now coming in at number eight is Wolf's Tailor. This is a fairly new restaurant, maybe seven or eight or more years. Um, and it, it, I visited only once. I loved it. It was a great experience. And it's down number eight, like Matt's, he said, it's a little on the pretentious side. Um, they are warm and welcoming, but I found the vibe a little, um, it was too loud. It was very young. Um, I'm aging a little bit, but the tables were super close together. The plates were super small and you could leave hungry at Wolf's Taylor um, and pay a very large amount of money but it's interesting, it's new, it's modern, it's new American cuisine. Now coming in at number seven is Sunday Vinyl. It's in the Frasca uh, food group, restaurant group. There are only three of them, I think, and Tavernet is the other one in Denver. So Sunday Vinyl is, is a little more casual, the most casual of the three. Um, now Frasca is my number one restaurant, James Beard award winning, and so is Sunday Vinyl, the chef there. Um, and you'll see Bobby Stuckey wandering around. He makes a point to uh, frequent that restaurant. I think it's Wednesdays or Thursdays. He'll be there helping you with wine selections. And he's a grand sommelier, as I, I mentioned in the last video. Um, so it's quite an honor to meet him if you head in there. It's more casual, smaller, uh, smaller tables, and has a music theme. The cocktails are great as well as the wine selection. Dishes are small, very contemporary, and nouveau cuisine and just interesting and very, very unique. It's a, a really cool place. And it's right on uh, Union Station, so you can actually see the track and the, the station from the window. It's really pretty. Coming in at number six is Edge, or The Edge in the Four Seasons restaurant. I've got it down at number six. Again, um, it's special, it's unique. Uh, really, really special occasions. And I think it was Forbes, um, Le Travel and Leisure, um, they um, awarded it number one in Colorado. Um, and it, it's a wonderful restaurant. I've been there only once, um, enjoyed it very, very much. It's a steakhouse, really, you know, upper class. It's expensive, really, really nice. Service is out of this world and a good experience. They also have wonderful Sunday brunches and on Saturday, I think, also, so it's a good place to take the family. Coming in at number five is Work and Class. Now that's down in Rhino again. It's opposite um, the bar called Death and Company and around the corner from Uchi, which I'll be talking about later. And it, it's the most casual uh, restaurant on this entire list. I went a few weeks ago, thoroughly enjoyed it. James Beard award-winning 
a chef called Dana Rodriguez. So it's, it's Southern inspired, Latin American and small plates, but they, they also have dishes to share. Everything on that menu was spectacular. You don't know, it, it's family friendly. You don't know if it's gonna be um, very, very casual. It has a casual feel. It's a busy bustling um, atmosphere, but the food is really exceptional. So are the cocktails. Coming in at number four is Uchi. It's just out from work and class and death and company. Um, and it's really an unusual place. It's sleek and modern. It's a glass, tall glass building. It's really, really unusual. So it's just a great experience to visit. But it was um, established by Tyler Cole, a James, also a James Beard award winning chef. And so it's non-traditional Japanese. It's Japanese with a twist. So it's worth a visit, absolutely. It's a must for Denver. You have to go to Uchi. I think Uchi in Japanese means house. So a wonderful experience, the atmosphere is second to none. Coming in at number three is Garden Grace. It's right downtown Denver. It's a modern steakhouse. And this restaurant rates highly because everybody loves it. It's rated highly in every magazine, every periodical. Um, and they also have an award-winning chef there. So it, it's out of this world. They've kind of cracked the code with atmosphere also. So they have a nice balance. It's not too loud. It's great family, romantic uh, place, but it, it's a steakhouse basically. Um, nouveau cuisine is more modern, but a wonderful feel. It's located down on California Street and it's about 9,000 square feet. It's huge and a wraparound glass wall. So you have great views and it's one of the largest dining patios in Denver. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, you have to visit. It also has one of the largest um, raw bars in town. It has a wood fired oven. It's fabulous. Now coming in at number two is Tavanetta, an Italian restaurant right down um, by the train station in Denver Union Station, right next door to um, Vinyl, um, Sunday Vinyl I spoke about earlier, and it's owned by the Frasca group, Bobby Stuckey is the sommelier there, um, and a few others, and it's a James Beard award-winning chef who two of them actually create the menu there. So it's Italian, absolutely exceptional. Um, it's not as formal as Frasca and Boulder, um, but they have a, a fireplace, a real wood burning fireplace. It's beautiful atmosphere. You can sit around the bar. It's a big open bar square with a less formal area by the bar. You can dine in, in around the back too. It's a very contemporary feel. Um, you do have to dress up. It's not as casual as Sunday vinyl. Um, a little more formal. The um, service is out of this world. They just spoil you there, um, which isn't isn't a given absolutely everywhere, but Tavernetta never fails. I really enjoy the service there. And I would say it's more on the romantic night out side of things. So coming in at number one is El Borrego. Um, the chef is a James Beard Award winning chef called Jose Avila or Avila. And he created the sheep barbacoa operation. He wanted to bring the authentic Mexican barbacoa to Denver. And so in 2020, he found a sheep farm in Northern Colorado, probably 200 sheep. And he treats them well and he feeds them well. And every Saturday evening, I think he cooks the whole sheep underground in a very traditional way. Now, he, it's kind of unique. He built an underground brick-lined oven um, on Morrison Road, um, and that's where he does all his cooking. It's very um, traditional Mexican method of barbacoa. And so it's exceptional. It, you know, there's no pretension. It's not, but it's not your typical hole-in-the-wall taqueria. It's absolutely must, you must visit here. Um, if you're in Denver visiting or live here, is, there's nothing like it. I've um, gone very casual for number one because um, there are so many fine dining places in Denver. I just wanted something a little more accessible. So it's just an experience you have to go. This whole setup feels like one of Denver's best kept secrets. They don't even have a website. There's no menu online. You can't book. 
you just have to show up and the barbacoa sells out so quickly. It's just worth going. Once again, thanks for visiting my channel. I'm Gillian Sargent, a realtor in the Denver Boulder metro area. So hit me up if you have any needs, real estate or other. And until next time, thanks for watching.